Uh, what I'd like to do first before going into the subpart F discussion is just finish up uh, two relatively uh, small but important parts of the foreign tax credit. Uh, not so much uh, because you're going to immediately go out and use these specific items, but they're concepts which, uh, which I think are, let's say, the kind which you would be expected to know or at least be familiar with if somebody talks to you about the foreign tax credit. Uh, the first one is carry back and carry over. So the question, I guess, first of all is, what is it that is carried back or carried over? You have a taxpayer, whether it's an individual or it's a company, each of them, uh, either of them, will have some amount of uh, U.S. tax uh, before uh, foreign tax credit and some amount of foreign tax credit limitation. You'll remember that that limitation is based on the formula which generally is going to be that U.S. tax before foreign tax credit times foreign source taxable income over worldwide taxable income. And there's going to be some amount of actual foreign tax paid. If the amount of foreign tax paid is more than the limitation, you have something which is called an excess foreign tax credit. Excess foreign tax credit. And this is what we're talking about in terms of carrying back or carrying forward. If in a particular year uh, a taxpayer, again, could be an individual, could be a company, if they have excess foreign tax credits, well, can they be carried back to an earlier year? Because it can be carried back one year. So we look to that earlier year and we look at those same numbers. The foreign tax credit limitation and the actual taxes for that earlier year. If the actual is less than the limitation in that earlier year, we have what we call an excess limitation year, or excess foreign tax credit limitation situation. Uh, that difference allows utilization. Now let's, uh, let's use a, a simple example to, uh, you know, with just some simple numbers. Let's say that in, in year zero, and then year one, uh, let's say one, and then year two. Let's say we have a limitation of 80. Say our limitation is 80 each year, make the number simple. And our actual taxes are 60 in year one, 100 105 in year two, and uh, 60 again in year three, in year, uh, I'm sorry, zero, year zero, year one, year two. Uh, so that in year zero, we have 20 of excess limitation. 
in year one, we have 25 of excess foreign tax credit. And in year two, we have 20 of, again, excess limitation. Again, we can carry back one year, forward 10 years, and I'll go through the numbers in a moment. Yes. Now, in year one, we have, okay, excess foreign tax credit because 105 is more than 80. The 105 is the actual taxes paid. 80 is how much the limitation formula allows us. So what do we do with that 25? Okay, we can carry it back one year. So if we carry it back to year zero, then we have excess limitation of 20. We can actually file and ask for a refund on the prior year for 20. We can go back, file a re, you know, an amended return asking for 20 additional back. So excess for, the use of excess foreign tax credits means a real savings, a real benefit for the taxpayer. Now, 20, of course, is less than the 25. Okay, we've absorbed 20 out of the 25 through the carry back. That means we still have five left. So the five left can be carried to year two. And since there's excess limitation in year two, when we file our tax return for year two, we can claim uh, the 60 of actual tax paid in year two plus five of the carryover. Uh, okay, the 25 of excess from year one, that's created because the actual tax paid is more than the limitation amount. We're able to carry that back one year, and we can carry it forward 10 years. In this specific example, 20 of the 25 can be absorbed in the prior year. So we can file an amended tax return and get 20 back from our friendly government. We still have five left. We can carry that forward. In this case, year two has excess limitation, so we can actually claim when we prepare the tax return for year two, we can claim the 60 of actual tax pay paid plus five additional. So we would, uh, in effect, claim 65 of foreign tax credit in year two. And if in year three we had excess foreign tax credits again, we could carry back and we would have 15 left. In other words, the excess limitation will be reduced by the, okay, let's say 20 is used here and five is used here, leaving 15, 15 of excess limitation, so that if, in, there, if there were a year three and we had another situation where actual taxes exceed the limitation, we could carry back up to 15 from year three. Okay, but anyway, the point that uh, you brought up was what about the baskets, the 904D baskets? Well, yes, these carry back and carry forward are on a basket by basket basis. Now, you heard me mention something, uh, I think last week, uh, that the basket for the new 
guilty rules, and again, next week we'll be talking about more specifically what those are. But the baskets, uh, the, uh, there's a separate basket for guilty income that uh, a US taxpayer recognizes. One of the rules on carry back and carry over is that there is no carry back or carry over for any foreign tax credits within the guilty basket. The other three baskets you'll recall are passive income, uh, foreign branch income, and all other. Those are the three other baskets. You can have a carry back and carry over for those three. But anything that is categorized as guilty, no carry back, no carry over. Now notice that effect because of this rule on how expensive it is to have guilty income. That 25 is lost forever. That 25 is lost forever. This aspect of guilty, again, as I described, it's like Congress hit this with a, uh, a sledgehammer or a baseball bat or something like that. Okay, so this is what we talk about, uh, or what we mean when we talk about excess foreign tax credit position or excess limitation position. <clears throat> 